Good evening, welcome. Uh, this is Concord High School's first annual convocation and Wall of Fame induction. I want to take a moment at the outset to recognize some of the people who made this event happen. First of all, the Wall of Fame Committee, Dan Breen of our Social Studies Department. <laughs> Dan is a graduate of the class of um, 2000, what is it? 2007. 2007, you're that young? Yeah. It's hard to believe. Um, Kim Blyer, also of our social studies uh, department, class of 1992. <laughs> Alexandra Grapponi, class of 2023. <laughs> Allie Moore, class of 2025. And the guy running around taking pictures is Tony Chanella, class of 1983. Tony. I also want to thank Superintendent Kathleen Murphy and the Concord School Board for their support of this project. I want to give a shout out to attorney Bill Glan for his help in initially contacting Justice Souter. A special thanks to our graphic arts teacher, Tom Mungovan, for designing the program for today's event, and to Chef Jason McCarter and his culinary program for preparing the food for today's reception. And I wanna recognize Brad Walcott, the class of 2001, for his beautiful design and installation of our actual Wall of Fame. And seemingly every time we have an event of any magnitude, I have to thank and want to thank uh, both Lisa Lamb and Clint Close for their work in getting this all together. <laughs> and finally, uh, an immense, our, our immense gratitude to George Golden, who teaches our engineering and architectural program for his invaluable and tireless help and goodwill in getting a lot of the detail work done regarding construction of the wall and its installation. So thank you, George. I don't know if I... Okay, so what is a convocation anyway? A convocation, simply speaking, is a gathering of like-minded people, which in American society today can be something of a remarkable achievement. Those of us gathered here today share the common bond of having experienced this school and what it represents, namely, the aspirations of the Concord community for its children, for Concord itself, and by extension, for our country. Indeed, a community's public schools are so embedded in the fabric of that community that we sometimes forget their profound significance. Public schools embody and provide the foundation for our most cherished values and beliefs. Much ink has been expended recently on the demise of the American dream. Yet each day in the halls of this school and thousands like it across the nation, teachers labor to ensure that every student, and here is the essence of what I'm suggesting, gets a shot at, however we might define it, the good life. That each student is prepared, supported, encouraged, and prodded to reach for a life of meaning and service, dignity, and achievement. None of this, of course, is guaranteed or easy or inevitable. That's what makes what occurs daily in the public school so profoundly important, simply because it's so hard and so vital to our individual happiness and our country's well-being. But we have guides, a lot of them, to help each of us on our journey. Of course, we'll be honoring two of our most accomplished guides this evening. Concord High School was founded in 1846 with a graduating class of 20, 27 students. The Saturday will hand diplomas to 306 CHS seniors. Since that first graduation, thousands of men and women have received their diplomas from Concord High School, and many, indeed most, but surely not all, have gone on to lead exemplary lives. 
Each of those graduate, graduates is potentially your guide to your achievement of, uh, of the words that you'll see on the new uh, wall of fame on Main Street, and you have a cheat sheet because it's on the back of your programs. Through these halls, pass those with the courage to lead, the strength to achieve, and the compassion to make our world a better place. These, are, these words are, in essence, your final, most important, and indeed crucial high school homework assignment. Think of it this way. In, say, 50 years, you return here for your own Wall of Fame induction, an honor you've earned because you've taken on the challenge of leadership, or because you've done special and hard things in your career, or because, most significantly, your work has made the world or maybe our community healthier, safer, happier, more just. What if all 306 of you did that? What if that occurred in every high school in every country on this planet? What would our world, what would your, indeed all of our lives be like then? We must, of course, pursue that dream individually and the countless decisions, large and small, each of us make every day about how we treat one another, about what we value and strive for, about what as individuals and as a society will accept and what we won't. You have our most fervent hopes and support in that endeavor. We're counting on you. We need you. And we believe in your capacity to, in fact, make our world better, one family, one neighborhood, one community at a time, and to someday have your image and accomplishments enshrined on the Concord High School Wall of Fame. And with that, let's turn to tonight's business. It's now my pleasure to introduce my colleagues, Kim Blyer and Dan Breen, to introduce our first speaker. Hey, class of 2023. Hi. Can you do that a little louder? Hey, class of 2023. Thanks for being here tonight. So as Mr. Reardon mentioned, I'm Kim Blyer, and I teach social studies here. I'm also a proud Concord High graduate, Roll Tide. This is Mr. Breen, he's my colleague. He was also my student once upon a time. <laughs> and he's also a proud Concord High graduate. So when we heard that Mr. Reardon had plans to create this wall of fame, as history teachers and proud alumni, we knew that this was the perfect project for us. So I graduated in class of 1992, and Mr. Breen? I graduated in the class of 2007. Um, and so we would like to together thank Mr. Reardon here tonight for starting this wonderful tradition. And you know what, class of 2023, maybe someday we'll be inducting some of you into the Wall of Fame. Well, I don't, we won't, but they might get inducted, but I don't think we'll be inducting them. Oh. We'll probably be gone. We'll be, we're too old? Yeah, well, some of us. What are you trying to say, Mr. Breen? Nothing. <laughs> All right, enough. Um, so I'm here, we are here to introduce our first speaker tonight. His name is Brooks Campbell. His grandfather, Edward H. Brooks, graduated in 1911 from Concord High School, and he's one of our inductees tonight. Mr. Campbell is a lifelong resident of New Hampshire. He graduated from University of New Hampshire, and he was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the United States Army, where he spent eight years flying helicopters. When he returned from the military, he hiked the Appalachian Trail. He took a job at the state of New Hampshire and settled in Wolfboro, New Hampshire. He's here tonight to tell us about his grandfather, who is our first inductee. So please give a warm Concord High round of applause for Mr. Brooks Campbell. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome, class of 2023. It's a privilege. It's, it's, my, it's my honor to be here speaking for my grandfather. 
I didn't know much about my grandfather and his military career because I came into this life 1950. When I first learned about my grandfather was when I started learning about myself and what was going on. And uh, I was about eight years old. I came down to the house and my grandfather said, if you had been here five minutes earlier, you would have met President Eisenhower. Hey, all right. So I went upstairs and watched Rin Tin Tin. <laughs> yeah. Then I went into the military. My father was military. And I spent the time in the military. We called my grandfather Daddy Pop. He was a, he was a gentleman and a, and a scholar. And I'm so honored to be up here talking about him, you know. And I'm a little nervous because I'm here with Justice Souter, distinguished, and I'm talking about my grandfather. He would have wanted every, each and every one of you in 2023 to follow his footsteps in just being honest, trustworthy, following your heart, believing, and being inclusive, not dividing. This country has become so divided, and I know that he's turning over in his grave. We need to come together and be a peaceful group because he knew war was hell. He always said that, and in, when he died in 1978, I went to his funeral. They brought me back from Germany. There were just generals and congressmen and bigwigs all around. And they all said the same thing, you know, war is hell. And we need to kind of stop it, but we never will. Anyway, I'm going to ramble. I right, thanks, Kim. You can see the pictures of my grandfather. And he wishes the class of 2023 all the success. And thank you very much for letting me speak. So on behalf of all current and future Concord High School alumni, um, it's my honor to present this Wall of Fame trophy to the family of Edward H. Brooks. Now, uh, Allie and Alexandra are going to say a few words about Justice Souter. Uh, so good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Allison Moore, and I'm a current sophomore here at uh, Concord High. My name is Alexandra Grapponi, and I am a senior graduating this year at Concord High. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so we have the very distinct pleasure tonight of uh, introducing our second inductee to the Wall of Fame. Uh, our second inductee is Justice David Souter, uh, who was a former Supreme Court Justice. Uh, and we're going to mention that about a thousand times tonight. Um, and he graduated Concord High in 1957. While Justice Souter was at Concord High, he was a member and president of our chapter of the National Honor Society, wrote for the school newspaper that was called the Crimson Review, and served as the yearbook co-editor. Justice Souter frequently has mentioned how much fun he had as a student here, but obviously he worked hard as well because after his graduation, he attended Harvard, majoring in philosophy and graduating magnum cum laude in 1961. Uh, following college, Justice Souter received the prestigious Rhodes Scholarship. Uh, this is the oldest graduate scholarship in the world, and it's competed for uh, among students across the globe. Uh, he, he, he was established in uh, 1902, uh, and uh, it allows uh, the lucky graduates to study for two and possibly three years at Oxford University. Uh, in England, uh, and while there, Justice Souter studied uh, Justice Pittis. Following Oxford, Justice Souter attended law school, again at Harvard, and then practiced law right here in Concord. In 1976, he was named New Hampshire's Attorney General, and in 1983, an Associate Justice of the New Hampshire Supreme Court. 
Uh, just seven years later, uh, President H.W. Bush uh, nominated Justice Souter, then 51, uh, to join the U.S. Uh, Supreme Court uh, as its youngest member. Upon his confirmation to the court, Justice Souter said, I have been given much, and much will be expected of me in return, and I will make that return to you, and I will make it in the fullest measure that I can. That is a pledge Justice Souter has fulfilled many times over through a course of life of service and scholarship. During his 19 years in the U.S. Supreme Court, Justice Souter heard cases on property rights, the separation of church and state, abortion rights, and the landmark ruling that suspended Florida's recounting of the votes in the 2004 presidential election between Al Gore and George Bush. All of these cases and many others that came before Justice Souter have had a profound role in shaping the course of our nation. It is now our honor to present the newest inductee to the Concord High School Wall of Fame, David Justice Souter. Woo! I, uh, I'm greatly honored uh, by, uh, by my... Uh, by my reception by all of you this evening. Uh, and I'm, I'm greatly touched. Uh, touched is, is, a, is a way of, of talking about one's subjective feelings. Uh, and I have very strong subjective feelings uh, about Concord High School. Uh, Coming back to it as, as I do uh, this evening, uh, this gathering is, is, is like a welcome home party. Uh, and uh, I, I, I am careful about my choice of words there. Uh, one does not necessarily think of, of, uh, of a big high school as home. Uh, but for three years, uh, it was it was my intellectual home uh, back more than than half a century ago. Uh, so that it it does make sense for me to think of myself as as coming home uh, 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 on this on this occasion of of so much kindness. Um, the uh, the the obligation that I feel is an obligation, obviously, that goes back to the class of 1957, uh, and an obligation that uh, that is 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 very strong because uh, I I got a very good education in the three years that I spent here. Uh, and an education that was as good as it was uh, simply because of the, the, the fine teachers uh, that, uh, that we had, that I had. Uh, and I, I think it's probably, probably fair to say that one teacher uh, here in, in the school whom I had during those years was the finest teacher I ever had in my life. Uh, and I am including in the, in the comparison behind that statement, not only the, the teaching uh, faculty of Concord High School, uh, uh, but of, of my college uh, and uh, my postgraduate education uh, and professional education. Uh, I, he was that good, and and now looking looking back on it, I I realize that one reason he was good uh, would probably not have occurred to me as obvious at the time. He certainly knew his subject; there was no question about that. But there was there was something more, uh, and. What I have, I have learned as time goes by, that the something more uh, was the very obvious fact that he loved the subject that he was teaching, and he loved teaching it. You could tell. 
uh, and um, uh, it was not a case, in other words, uh, of just being an expert in a subject as great as that was, uh, but being an uh, being a, 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 a an expert who loved his subject. And implicitly, uh, what that teacher was conveying to us uh, was a, a, a rule for life, really. Uh, and uh, it, it, was, it was a rule for life that uh, Robert Frost uh, put in, in a, uh, a, a splendid couplet. It, it's from... Uh, it was, it's from Farah's poem, Two Tramps in Mud Time, which may not sound like an approach to a, a, a teacher in a school, but uh, in, in Two Tramps in Mud Time, uh, Frost recognized the um, obvious, perhaps, need to love what you do. Uh, and uh, uh, he said um, that the that without without love as 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 well as work uh, one does one does not as he put it uh, do one's best for heaven in the future's sake uh, and I think. I think maybe that uh, that couplet by Frost is is the best career advice I, I ever ran across. Only where love and need are one, and the work is play for mortal stakes, is the deed ever really done for heaven and the future's sakes. Uh, I could not have put the point into words myself. But I think I did absorb the lesson that was implicit and demonstrated uh, by the teacher I have in mind. Uh, and uh, that, is the, that is the reason, uh, ultimately, uh, uh, that I, I love the school uh, as much as I did at the time, for I had a wonderful three years. And now, um, all of you here in the school and those of you who have come together with, with me this evening uh, have given me uh, another reason to love Concord High School. Uh, you, uh, I, your generosity, the school's generosity, the committee's generosity, and simply yours in receiving me here this evening uh, uh, has given me that, that further and later reason to love the school. And, and so uh, when I think of the, uh, the, the, uh, the honor that has been paid to me by the school and by all of you here tonight, uh, there is only one thing to say. And that is thank you. On behalf of all current and future Concord High alumni, it is my honor to present this Wall of Fame trophy to David Souter. Thank you, Justice Souter. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Congratulations on your granddad's uh, uh, ascension into the Concord High School Wall of Fame. So that concludes part one. 
So part two is we are going to do a recession out to the actual Wall of Fame <clears throat> for the unveiling of the plaques. What a great presentation. We just had a chance to see, and I spoke to both of your teachers, and I said, uh, how are you going to talk this next year? So we'll see how they do. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm Kathleen Murphy. I'm the superintendent of schools for the Concord School District. And tonight, I have the privilege of introducing uh, the president of the school board of Concord, um, Jim Richards. Uh, Jim has served on the school board for over nine years. Um, talk about service to the community. Uh, Jim has stepped up, has been a leader here in Concord and um, helped uh, help drive all of the issues and the programs and the opportunities that we have for students. So um, it's my pleasure to introduce Jim. I just one couple of notes about Jim. Jim uh, is a dad of two Concord High School graduates. Um, one that I understand is graduating this year. Is that right? Is that right? Oh, that's good. That's a good thing, right? And um, so, without any further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce the president of this common school board, Jim Bridges. Thank you, superintendent, for your very kind words. Um, this evening, I have the privilege of representing the Concord Board of Education in this amazing ceremony. And at the same time, I have the unenviable position of following Justice, Justice Souter's remarks. I will hopefully be brief enough that you don't have an opportunity to compare my oratorical skills with his. Um, for those of you who don't have the pleasure of spending a lot of time in the high school, we stand in what the Concord High School community refers to as Main Street. It's the crossroads of the East and the West Wings of the Regional Technical Center. It is in all sense a hub of this school. It's safe to say that every student passes here at least once a day. It's a special location in CHS and it's an ideal location for this wall. For the purpose of this wall is twofold. First, it's, the, it's to honor those alumni who walked these halls and have gone on to have a historic impact in their world. And that is no better exemplified than our first two inductees that we honor this evening. But second, it's to remind each of the students that pass here every day that they too have the opportunity to make a lasting and meaningful impact in the world. They don't always realize just how remarkable they are and their achievements have yet to be written. Class of 23, congratulations, you're almost there. You have only a few more days before graduation, but before you leave these halls, I invite you to take some time to stand before this wall and consider the lives of the inductees we honor tonight. They once stood exactly where you are today. What will be your impact in the world? I challenge you to follow the example of General Brooks and Justice Souter. Find your individual path in life, whatever it may be. Follow your dreams with passion and commitment and be the best you that you can possibly be. I am confident that some of you will have your plaques here in the future, but I absolutely know that each of you, in your own individual way, has the ability to make your community, your nation, and your world a better place. If you do that, each of you, in your own small way, possibly larger than others, will own or will um, own a small piece of the wall behind me. It's a pretty big wall, and there's room for all of you. So go out and greet the world. So now I'd like to invite Brooks Campbell to come over here with me and unveil the plaque. General Edward R. Now 
Your Honor. Justice Souter, would you join me as we unveil this plaque?